everybody, it's Annette Green here, and it's dark in the studio, so I've got all these extra lights on. <laughs> I'm working here in the evening. Uh, today's video is all about using your slimline dies in a different way. We all know the popularity of the slimline card, which has been all the rage this year in 2021. And here are a couple cards to show examples of that. These are dies from Elizabeth Craft Designs, and I will tell you all about those. Uh, one Christmas and one Halloween used with all of their dies and some Graphic 45 products. But today's video is not about slimline cards. It's about taking your slimline dies and making a lantern, a three-dimensional home decor piece lantern. I'm going to show you um, how to make everything from beginning to end. This one will be done already, and I will build this one in the video. Of course, I'm taping this at the very end, so it's all finished, but I'm going to take you through how to make it. They are made exactly the same way. Uh, I mentioned some small differences, of course, when we get going, and that is paper is here, and just cardstock is here, and little things like that. So let me tell you about what went into these, and then let's get started. Okay, for supplies, you will need to decide. Are you going to make the Halloween one, or are you going to make the more Christmassy one, or are you going to make both? So if you're going to make the Halloween one, you will need two sheets of 12 by 12 black chipboard. I use medium weight by Graphics. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, I will link it below. Uh, you will need some black cardstock, and you will need some decorative paper. So for the Halloween one, I used Graphic 45's Midnight Tales, and um, it all f it was from the 8x8 paper collection for that one. And for the Christmas one, I used the new Let It Snow. You will need this wonderful spiderweb slimline background die from Elizabeth Crafts. It has the two little spiders and this great big background. Uh, if you're going to do the flowers and the leaves like I did, you will need the lacy leaf die or something like that, and the florals tin die. I cut all of my flowers, both the Halloween and the Christmas one, using Elizabeth Craft Soft Finish White cardstock in the 90 pound, which is 240 G. And you will need some inks, you will need some adhesive, you will need some scoring tools, a craft knife, basic crafting tools like that. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is you will need some vellum. That is the base of how we can see through the lantern to, to see the light coming through. So in the Halloween one, I have sort of a gold frosty vellum. And behind the Christmas one, I have just a white frosty vellum. You can buy vellum also on Amazon and your favorite crafting stores. I bought a pack of like a variety of colors so I could pick and choose and it was great. Okay, if you're going to do the Christmas one, uh, I use the brand new Classic Christmas Special Kit. And this is just like a sample sheet to show you some great ideas of what you can do with this set. But what comes in the set is the slimline die that looks like this. Uh, also in that set, this is one whole set, you guys, is um, all the Snowflake Variety Pack. So this is a Christmas special set. And then the other die that comes with this is the Ornament Trio, which has these and the little toppers to the ornaments. Uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, but there is a stamp set that comes with this as well. And I don't know where it is. So anyway, <laughs> it comes with a wonderful stamp set with all kinds of great phrases like wishing you a Merry Christmas, joyful wishes, all these different sentiments. So it's wonderful. Uh, to make the point set of flowers, of course, I use the Florals 12. And I kind of reiterate some of this stuff later on in the video. And going back to the Christmas one, you will, instead of needing black chipboard, you'll need two sheets of white chipboard, 12 by 12. And you will need several sheets of white cardstock. This base is all made from cardstock, but it's super sturdy and strong. And we do that on both of these. Okay, so I think I've got it covered. Oh, one more thing. If you have it, I use metallic cardstock to make a lot of these lacy leaves on the fronts and on the tops. If you don't have it, use cardstock. That's fine. You can always emboss it with some silver or gold embossing powder. But I just happen to have 
like literally in my stash I had a bunch of different colors of this metallic cardstock that I just rarely used and this was the perfect opportunity for that. Okay, so let's dive right in and get to making this lantern. All right, so to begin, you're going to cut one of your chipboard sheets, leave it uh, 12 wide, but then cut it to nine inches tall, and then cut another piece at four by nine. Okay, and as you can see by my pencil lines here, I have marked off every four inches and so I want to score this, but because it's chipboard, you can't just put it in a scoreboard and work at it with a stylus. That's why my pencil lines are here. Uh, because I use a ruler and a craft knife to actually score like a slit into the chipboard. So I'm just lining up, getting on my pencil line, and I'm doing very, very light pressure, and I'm probably going to do it about three times with very light pressure. I feel like I need to do it one more. I can tell because I've done this enough, but you just want to make sure that you are able to, see, you have to be able to kind of crack on that that line. So I'm going to go over it maybe two more times. A little more pressure that time and let's see. Just about there and if I'm gentle I can do it without tearing anything. And I'm not so concerned about how this is going to look right now because we're going to cover this weird raw, raw edge with some decorative paper. But basically that's all I'm doing is I'm kind of splitting it without cutting all the way through so that I can fold it. So I'm going to continue that here. Okay, I have those two done. Looks good. And then just to finish out the square, I am taking just good old clear scotch tape to attach this last panel. And I am leaving about a sixteenth of an inch of space between and I'm, I'm just kind of top and bottom I'm putting a piece of tape just to hold it while I put this long piece down and again none of this will show so we don't care and the reason why we leave a little bit of a gap there is so that when we fold this around it doesn't tear through our tape so that looks good and I will trim this or tuck this around I think I'm just going to trim it and before we close it all up, and while we have our scoreboard out, I'll show you how we're going to decorate those corners and cover up those raw edges. My decorative paper strips, I cut four, and they measure one and an eighth by nine. Now, the one and an eighth seems a little odd, but because you're going to wrap around the corner, uh, you need just that little bit of extra. And so we need to fold these in half. And unfortunately, I don't know about you, but my scoreboard does not have sixteenths. And you would have to score it at nine sixteenths <laughs> or just fold it in half like I'm doing here. You see how I kind of curved it before I started to fold it because it's really hard to deal with otherwise. And I'm just moving my way down. So you'll do that to all four. And then I will ink these raw edges with a little light blue ink. Tumbled glass, I think, is going to work just fine. And uh, I will just hit all around those outside edges. And so the next thing you'll want to do is take this big unit and before we put it all together we have to cut away the openings where we're going to see through to the vellum and that slimline die background. So what I have done is I've taken my ruler and a pencil and for each one of these panels I have come in and drawn a line one half inch all the way around each panel. So if you can see those, there they are. And now I'm going to carefully cut away just that inner portion and I made sure I have a brand new blade in my craft knife nice and sharp 
Make sure everything's squared up. And just starting at that half of an inch from the top, I'm going to come down. And again, this is very thick chipboard. So uh, it, for me, it's impossible to cut it in one pass. So I'm going to do it in at least four or five. Okay, I've got all my little windows cut open here and I have folded again. Uh, I just wanted to show you just a really quick little tip. This might be helpful. Uh, this might scare some of you like, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. I'm going to cover it with paper, like I said, but the trick to avoiding this being so rough and raggedy is to, that tells me I did not score deep enough. So just practice. Practice before on a piece of scrap uh, chipboard before you go doing your actual and then that way you know like look at how nice and clean and neat this one is that's because i went a little firmer with my scoring this time instead of on my actual i should have practiced here first but it makes a nice neat corner so that's that's my little tip there so back to this we're ready to go Eventually we will join this, but first, while it's flat and easy to get around everything, we're going to put in our vellum and our little die cut slimline piece in here. So let's do that next. Next, we want to cut our die cut piece out of, I'm going to use this dark blue pattern paper from the patterns and solids of the same line I'm using. And so you're going to want to cut four of them at four by the nine. And um, that's just a little bigger than the die, which is great. You want that. But the one step you don't want to skip is before you die cut it, you want to put some double-sided adhesive on the back of this. Because if you forget, like I did when I first did it, uh, you've got to hit glue all over the back of this. And you don't want to do that. So uh, your best friend here are the 8.5 by 11 sheets of Elizabeth Crafts double-sided adhesive. I have cut down the sheets to three and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths so that's just a little bit smaller to put on the back you can see here i've already done these so there's a little bit of edge showing um, that's just so i don't have to get it exactly super duper straight okay all right so i'm just going to peel back about two inches and i'm holding on to both pieces and i'm just going to try to hover over my piece here of course doing it on camera is so much different than the couple that i just did so i'm way off over here but that's okay i just have to remember when i die cut this one that i don't get too close to this edge but you definitely want to take a second to burnish this down really well before you go to your die cutting machine We've got our four die cut sheets, and as you can see, I have not popped out any of those pieces. Everything is still intact. I don't really want to pop anything out just yet uh, because, and it's okay if some things do, that's fine. Uh, but what I want to do, as you can see I've done to these three already, is I want to take, you can do this with adhesive, I am using the super skinny Elizabeth Crafts um, double-sided adhesive. It's the skinniest one they have. And I'm just, there's that one little border lip to this die that's the same width as the tape. So I'm just gonna put that all around the front of all four of these. And then that way we can adhere it into our lantern frame. All right, couple of little things that I discovered as I was going along that might be helpful for you is so that you can correctly place this into place in the frame. You'll want to, see how I popped out all the blue, but you see the white is still here on a lot of that. That's so I didn't have like all that sticky exposed. Um, but mainly I needed to pop out all around this outer area, as you can see, most all of those pieces are gone. And that is so, when I go to put this in here, I'm going to peel this up and this will help me to be able to see where that frame and this outer edge kind of line up. Otherwise you really you can't see where you're going if you don't pop those pieces out around the outer edge. All right, so I'm going to flip this over and I'm just kind of looking over the top making sure lining up with everything 
And you can see if I had popped out or picked off all this backing, this would all be really sticky and very hard to deal with. So I'm just going to adhere that. And then you can peel all this stuff up. And, you know, I will say that picking out all those little bits and pieces from the blue, that is a tedious little task. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So just be patient. Um, if you have your TV near you or your device, you can turn on a show and just go at it. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking, um, I wish I knew the millimeters. I think this is about five millimeter wide, so it's a little wider than that skinniest one that I've used just before. And all I'm gonna do here, because I know that my vellum is gonna be just a little bit smaller than my frame, is I'm gonna put this just outside, the outside edges of the, the die. When you're cutting your vellum, you'll want to cut it just a little bit smaller than the panel. And if you remember, these are four by nine, so I cut these three and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And of course, you'll need four pieces. Now we'll take our vellum and just kind of start at the top. And because we have all that double-sided adhesive on the die cut, we can burnish all of this really well and everything sticks very nicely. Our next step is to close it up and I again have used just clear scotch tape uh, started on the ends and then put another strip right down here and so we can now get ready to decorate these uh, corners but uh, I remembered and I didn't do this on my Halloween one it was just blank I didn't do any of this decorative paper I just did black cardstock but um, I realized that I do need something top and bottom so these strips are about three and a half inches long by a half of an inch they don't have to be four because we know that we're going to come over this. So that's why they're a little shorter. So I've started to do that all the way around and I'm just going to put on this last one. For these I just use double sided adhesive. It doesn't matter. You can use whatever you like. I do not trust myself with the double sided adhesive <laughs> when it comes to putting these on because I feel like I want to be able to slide them into place and double-sided adhesive makes me commit which is scary so I'm going to use a little liquid glue all along both sides of the inside that ought to do it and then just I've done the other three just slide this on here to create a lid that would look something like this you need to start with some sturdy cardstock and cut the main piece seven and a quarter inch by seven and a quarter inch once you do that you're going to score all the way around at three quarters and one and a half Okay, and the one thing you want to check before you get too much further is just lay your ruler in here from the inside score line to the next inside score line across here to make sure that it's at least four and an eighth. It should be a little bit more than that because that's the size you really need for it to be to go on your box and not be so snug. So I am folding on all score lines 
you've ever built a box before, this is very familiar to you. Or any kind of lid. Okay, once you have folded on all your score lines, you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut on the inside score line a slit, the next score line another slit, but this time you're going to cut off this outside area and then just a, that half of that little tab. I'm going to go around and do that all the way around. So cut, and cut, cut the outside one off, cut the inside one half off. Okay, repeat that until you get all the way around. Now we're going to put this together, but before we do, because this is going to fold in and this is going to fold in, I like to go in and just shave off just a little tiny bit, uh, just barely a sixteenth off of this outer flap. And do that all the way around on these big flaps. To adhere this closed, I'm going to come over here on my little tab. And those are going to come in first, so you want to get in there and square up that corner very nicely. Okay, and then to dress up the top of the box, pick your favorite paper and cut a 4x4 four four inch square for the top. And then the sides are actually little strips at 4 and an eighth by 5 eighths each. So I adhered those all the way around and my pretty paper on the top and it fits great on the top of my box. It's not super snug like my Halloween one which again, this is how it looks on the top, papers on the sides. This one fits a little more snugly. Okay, so now I'm going to teach you a really cool thing, cool technique on how to make your own base for this box. It's super lightweight. It's all made of cardstock and paper. So let's dive into that right now. Okay, for a fancy base, you need to cut a piece of your cardstock, eight inches by eight inches. And you're going to do that same scoring on all four sides, three quarters and one and a half, turn it, three quarters, one and a half, and so on, all the way around. But this time, instead of cutting slits and tabs and things, you're just going to cut away this outer whole corner. All the way around. Okay, so we're going to put that aside for a minute. And you will also need to cut a 5 by 5 inch square. And then you will need a total of, let's see, I think 5 will work. We may not need this many, but, but you know, just keep watching. <laughs> the size of these pieces, and this is also the same cardstock, 3 and 3 quarters by a 16th less than 5 inches. So 4 and 15 sixteenths. There's a reason for that. You will see. And so on each of these, you're going to put them in your scoreboard this tall way with three and a quarter across. And you're going to, you're going to score every three quarter inches. So three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, and three. And the whole idea here is to make these structure tubes, I like to call them. So you're going to fold all in the same direction and eventually we're going to glue that shut so you have a square tube. Okay, so you've I've already figured it out. You only need four of those pieces, not five. So we're going to get started with this and just so you understand what the heck I'm doing here. We are making a base that is fairly solid by putting in these little support beams inside and they're all going to go in here. This is all going to close up and then our last piece of cardstock is going to go here and believe it or not it's a very very sturdy base. 
So I'm going to get adhesive on all my little tubes, start putting them in here, and I will be back. All right, so I have glued my first tube over here flush with this left edge, and this will come up and around in a bit. But I want to go ahead and get my second one in on the opposing side. And it's important that these are nice and squared up. That's why I like to use liquid glue so I can slide them in place. And here is also the reason that we cut the tubes just shy of five inches because once you did all your scoring, this inner area is five inches. And so you have to come in just a little bit shorter for these to come up and around and everything to be nice and square. So, so far that's how we're looking. And then I'm looking for the overlap here. We'll put in the other two just sort of evenly spaced in here. And we're just going to close all this up by putting adhesive and keeping everything nice and square as we go. Make sure nobody leans over like that. And then we'll finish it off with that piece of cardstock. I've got these two sides glued over. And then when I go to do this one, I don't have to put glue on this whole thing because I'm really only going to touch this little area here. So I'm just going to put the adhesive here and then maybe just a little bit on these outside edges. And then when I bring these around, this is the one that's more important to really square up all the edges, not let anything, oops, see, push that out of place. And this is why liquid glue is definitely the best option for this step. You got just a couple of seconds to score that up pretty well. So you can kind of press on the table. Looks good. Okay, and then I will do that over here the same way. All right, and then to finish it off, we will put on our top piece. I just checked the fit of it, which I would recommend doing just to make sure that 5x5 five five square is not just a little too large now that you have this all put together. And I did have to trim off just a hair so it wasn't hanging off the edge. I'm getting adhesive all the way out to the corners mainly here. Okay. And this can be either the very bottom, which is probably what I will do, or it could be the top. You're going to cover this with paper, so whatever you decide, but I think this will be the bottom of mine. Okay, and then just like the lid, we're going to get some decorative papers going, and we are going to decorate that so that our box can sit right on the base like that. I'm going to use this pretty blue paper to cover the top of the box. The measure of this paper is four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And then you can make the decision if you want to wrap paper around the sides. For me, I'm just going to use some strips and I cut these diamonds. Um, from the other side of the signature page in the Let It Snow con collection. And these also measure four and seven eighths by five eighths tall. So I'm just going to get those on all four sides and then we can adhere our lantern to the top of the base. Okay, now I have you down low so you can see what I'm about to do. I'm going to pick the box up and I'm going to put adhesive on this bottom lip, I am going to use Aileen's Super Thick Tacky Glue. It is super thick. And just so you can see how I apply it, let's see. <laughs> I just dab, 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 like a bead of glue all the way around. So I'm going to do that 
You may not see it all happening, but that's about as much as I put. And I'm going to continue on around nice and thick. This glue um, dries fairly quickly and it dries clear, so I don't care if it oozes out a little bit when I go to press it down onto the base. Okay, so taking the box and I'm centering it right onto the base. I'm taking a peek around, all the way around, just to make sure it's centered. And if you see a big glob of glue like that, you can run your fingernail across there, cleans that right up. Or you can use a piercing tool, but I'm just using my finger. Okay, so that just needs some time to sit and adhere and settle and then we can decorate. Uh, let's hop back to the Halloween version of our lantern here. And I'm going to show you very quickly how I colored those flowers. Uh, but you can see that these leaves have been cut from a metallic cardstock. And I have, I just had a pack that I've had forever. It has all different colors in it. I couldn't even tell you where I've got, I got it because I've had it so long. But there's gold here and there's purple and there's sort of a kind of a burnt orange kind of color in there too. And so I did the same on the top with some leftover pieces that I had when I was doing these. Uh, so those are all in the background and we've got our little spiders in the purple metallic as well. But to just show you very quickly how I colored those flowers. So I cut the largest, the next size down, and then the next size down. And I used a combination of like like a yellow, this is not a real bright yellow, it's fossilized amber distress. And I just kind of get some of that yellow here and there. This is not perfect, there's no real exact way to do it because I'm going to blend these colors anyway and I want them to have a little bit of a, I don't know, a little creepy Halloween look to them. So that's my yellow and then I use some orange. This, in this case, this is uh, ripe persimmon. So I'm just kind of dabbing that around as well. You can do this a number of ways, of course. You can smush this ink on your nonstick craft sheet or your glass mat, and you can spray with water and dip your flowers in there. Uh, I definitely do it that way sometimes. Uh, for the underneath, I think I'll just kind of put a bunch of this orange. You don't always see the underneath, but in case you do, you don't want to see all that white. And of course, I don't know if I mentioned, I'm using the Soft Finish White cardstock from Elizabeth Crafts for all my flowers. Okay, so we still just have to add the purple. Another way you could add this color is with like just distress sprays, which I have, but I find that they're just a little messy. Okay, so let's flip them back over to the front, and then now just a little purple. And again, it can be anywhere. You can put it toward the middle, you can put it out to the sides, it just doesn't matter. And they'll start to take on this kind of muddy look, which is exactly what I wanted. These aren't supposed to be bright and cheerful. Okay, and I will come in with some black after, but what I like to do now is take a little spritz bottle of water and give them a little shot of that. And this does a couple of things. It sort of blends the colors a little bit and it also starts adding a little bit of like a distressed speckle to everything. So I'm just going to heat these and get them dry, and I'll be right back. They're pretty dry. Now we'll take some black ink and just start dragging it out lightly. We don't want to completely cover what we just did, but we just want to blacken it down a little, a little gray actually. So it's looking like that. That's great. You can always come back in with a little more yellow if you want. It just depends on the look you're after. 
I'll show you what that looks like. Yeah, I think I want to put a little more yellow, so I'm going to grab a little more of that. Just give it a little more depth around the edges. Okay, cool. That's exactly what I want right there. So I'm going to heat these again, and then I'm going to get out the shaping mat, and I will show you how we make them a little more dimensional. Okay, here I got my flowers. I'm going to put everybody face down on the mat, and uh, I hope you can see this okay, because it's getting dark in the craft room. I actually brought in a couple of extra lights. So I'm using a large ball stylus, and I'm just sort of pulling in from the petal to the center, and if you notice, I'm trying to not be tempted to hold on to the flower. While I'm doing this, I'm trying to just let it do its thing. I find that if you hold on to it, it doesn't want to curl. You're actually fighting that. So it gets nice and curled up like that, and then you can just flip it over and give it a really good firm press in the center. And now it has a whole lot more dimension like that. So I will do that to these other two, and then we'll just stack them up and I'll show you what we put inside. Okay, so I have layered them up. They're glued together. The glue is still drying, but that is how they're looking. And so there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, I have this big bag of assorted, um, what are we gonna call these? Like stamens that you put inside the flowers? <laughs> And I just, you know, I happened to buy a bag of colored ones. I have another bag that has all different types that are just all ivory, which you could color with markers or just leave them white or whatever. And so for these particular flowers, I think, yeah, I chose purple and orange and this bright green, as you can see there, to put into the centers. And really all you do is, um, you take these little guys, I fold them in half instead of cutting them all because they do have that little bead of color on both sides. If you can see that, the light is terrible right now. But you can fold them in half and there is a hole in here even though mine's filled with glue right now, but you can put that right down in the flower um, and then add as many colors as you want. And so that's what I had, I had done on my sample. Uh, another thing that you can do if you don't want to go and buy all these guys is you could use beads or these little things called prills and they're called mini prills, P-R-I-L-L-S and they come in a lot of different colors. I believe you can find them on Amazon. I, if they are there, I will make sure that I link to those for sure. Uh, but you can buy different colors and you can just pour some glue in here and pour some of those beads in there. You can do it with little pony beads or, or anything you have. A uh, little gem in there would be great too. So that is how those were done. And again, there's one on the top. All right, so let's move over to our Christmas one. Okay, I've already begun to die cut some snowflakes out of silver. A little hard to see right now, but they are there. And remember, this is the top of our box. So I thought that I would incorporate some poinsettia flowers into our design on the front, much like we did on the Halloween one. So this is a little sample of one I've made already. And this is from the Florals 12 set. And they look just like poinsettias. They don't call them poinsettias, but uh, you can make them a lot of different flowers really, but they make a perfect poinsettia. So again, I have used uh, green and yellow of those stamens in there. You can see I have the, the bundle all taped together on the back there. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how I colored this one. But just to give you an idea of what I'm planning here, is I use that lacy leaf die. Again, I die cut some silver ones. I had in that stash of metallic cardstock, I had a really nice soft blue color. And then I also had like a, a grayish blue, a darker grayish blue color. So I have cut two of each of those just to kind of fill and play with here. I've also in that same set with the poinsettia flower, the 12, it has these little holly leaves, but they're great behind the poinsettia flower. So I'm going to work those in on here, but let's, let's color. 
I did a couple over here already just to show you different sizes, but I want to show you how we color these real quick. It's pretty similar. This time I'm using Festive Berries Distress Ink. This is not oxide, it's just inks. This is a super bright Christmas red. It's perfect. So just like we did before, this time we're just going to use this one color and a little bit of brown to give it a deeper look because I don't have any kind of burgundy ink and I don't really want it to be burgundy. I just want it to be sort of a distressed red. So I think this is going to be perfect. Well, I know it is because I did a bunch of samples. So again, doing both sides. And I won't show you how I shape it because I did it exactly the same way that I did the Halloween flowers. And that was face down on the mat, curl, 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 flip it over, press in the middle. Super easy. And I am getting really inky red here for sure. But that's the fun of it. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm going to take some brown ink. This is Vintage Photo. And I'm going to concentrate a lot of it in the center. And then I'm going to just kind of sweep it out. Not really covering up what I did, just kind of toning it down. Let's see if I can show you that a little closer. Okay. So I'll do that to all these and get them shaped and they will turn out just like this. I'll just stack them up and put the stamens in the center and they're done. So let me finish this up and I will be back with my finished decorated Christmas lantern. Just in case you wanted to see the leaves, I used two different colors of green, peeled paint for the middles because it's a lighter green. Oops. And then this darker green is Rustic Wilderness, which I'm just going to hit kind of on the outside, sweeping out, leaving that center part the lightest. If you can see that. And then, of course, I got to hit the back some of the dark green. guys look at um, very happy with how these turned out they are very big and beautiful 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed following along with this. Uh, this is obviously me trying to camouflage my work table <laughs> so you don't see the mess back there. But a few things that I wanted to mention, and that is, uh, of course, you can put a little tea light down in there. I've got one of those little battery operated ones. You certainly do not want to use a flame candle <laughs> in either one of these. Uh, but better yet, I found these larger battery operated candles. Uh, this one happens to be a fall one, but they have them in white and different colors. And there's two AA batteries in there. This one actually smells like pumpkin, so it's kind of cool. But I'm going to stick that one down in there and turn off some of my lights so you can get a sense of how they look. So you can see this one, you know, it it's flickering in there. And if the lights were all off, you would see that. Uh, but the bigger candle definitely works a lot better, I think. So there we go, guys. That's my lantern projects. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making them. I hope you give it a try. As always, I will try to remember to list all the products that I used in the description below and anything else I can think of that you need to know. So thank you very much for joining me again. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Okay, well, I'm going to go get a manicure. Bye, guys.